All right, Tom, uh, we're here today. We're going to talk about the operation of the autopilot here, the Dynon autopilot um, here in 2240 Charlie, how it works and how it interfaces with the GPS and also with the Dynon. Um, first of all, uh, we powered up our screen here. You could see here down in the lower left corner, AP, that's autopilot, and you could see two errors, ERR and ERR. Pretty much that means our autopilot switch is off and disarmed. So down here is the autopilot switch. When we flip that on, now this is going to say off and off. So now our autopilot is armed, but it's off. We're not getting any heading, heading or altitude um, guidance here. Um, now it's important that if we're going to use the autopilot during a flight, that we turn the autopilot switch on um, while we're on the ground. The reason being is the gyros in the system need to initialize, and so they need to have at least 10 seconds to get stabilized before we, uh, before we start that up. Okay, so we have off and off right here. Um, let's move up here to the right to our, um, our Dynon uh, panel here. Uh, we have two panels here for the autopilot. One on the right side here and one on the, on the left side. This AP button, this will activate the autopilot. Just with one click of the button, you will see the LEDs on here turn on and it's going to engage us in, in, in heading and altitude mode. So if you look here at our heading, that, it, that's illuminated and if you look at our altitude, that's illuminated uh, if we push it right there. So we can either have it with the, heading, uh, with the altitude on or off. Um, so anyway, so right now um, it, it's going to keep our current heading and if we hit altitude it's going to fly with our current altitude that, that, that we select right there. Um, on this screen here it, it, you could choose the source on which you want the pilot, autopilot to navigate off of. So right now it's on heading mode like we pointed out and I'll show you how to get to the heading bug later. You could uh, navigate off a track and I'll show you how to do that later. Nav, and you can do it to navigate off the GPS or a VOR. Um, also another uh, function with this autopilot button here, it says hold 180. And what that means is if, if you push this button, obviously like I said, it, it, uh, it activates the autopilot. But if you would hold it down for two seconds, um, it'll actually put you in a 180 degree turn, straight and level. Um, so let's say uh, you inadvertently go into IMC, into a cloud, for instance. You hold that button down for two seconds and, and virtually let go and that'll turn you 180 degrees out of that cloud. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Um, also here we have a value button. Let's go ahead and click this. We're going to push it in. All right, so now you can see on, on, on both screens here, you have um, heading here. Uh, it, it stays up for about five seconds. If we click it again, it's going to go altitude, and it's always going to be at our current altitude. Click it again at barrow, so it's our, our altimeter setting there. We could also adjust that on the Dynon, which I, we could talk about later. And so we do that by clicking in, and you can adjust it um, based on whatever heading you want. And you can see up here the heading bug on the heading type, how it switches there for whatever heading we want. Now a cool feature is, let's say we're, we're flying heading here of, of 350, and we want to hold heading at 350. Um, this knob here, um, sorry, this knob here, the heading knob, this also controls the heading. But if we want to fly a heading that we're already on, you push it in, and then it, it holds a heading of, of 350 right there. So pretty neat. Um, you could just click it to there, or let's say we're heading up 320 and we want to turn it to 020, you just click the button in and turn it over to 020. Not, not a problem at all. Alright, let's move over to the, uh, to the left side here. We also have a value button here. This also does the same thing as the button that I showed you. You could curs uh, cursor through altitude, uh, the bar barometric setting, altimeter setting, and, uh, and heading. Um, so here we have a, a nav source. Um, one thing to remember with, with a lot of autopilots and GPS, mm -hmm. when you see a, a, a purple light, typically that means it's GPS derived information. Um, we'll look down here at our, at, our, um, at our HSI here, which is also connected with the autopilot. Um, we have a, in our GPS, I, I, I put this direct to Ramona, just, for, uh, just, for, uh, just so you can have an example here. So okay, our nav source is, is uh, GPS, so the autopilot will be navigating off the GPS. And here with the uh, HSI, we have a, a, a pink or a purple uh, line here. You have your uh, distance to waypoint. And you have all this information here. If you hit the, the nav source again here, you click it. Now you see kind of a, a green light there, and now you have a green bars here on the, on the HSI. So that means now it's, when you see green, typically that means now you're using v, uh, VHF derived information. Uh, right now I have the localizer tuned in here to Gillespie. And you can see right here, you have uh, the localizer tuned in, the frequency that I put in, which I put in down here um, in, in the frequency box. So whichever one you want to navigate off, you, you make sure that's in the right mode before you, before you navigate. Alright, uh, like I said, I already talked about our, our heading mode here. 
um, we have a course, this actually changes the course that, that we want to navigate off. So let's say we're flying the localizer, we'd want the course to be uh, 269, so we'd actually rotate that here to 269, and that's how we would, we would fly it. If we're navigating off a of VOR or anything like that, that's how we would select the radial. This thing also um, has, has glide slope information on the HSI, um, which, which we could also use if we're flying an instrument approach. But this is how you change the course, and then you could change the heading uh, up here also. It changes the heading bug on the Dynon screen up there, and then also on the heading bug. Okay, well, one thing I want to point out too is this autopilot disconnect button. Um, if you hold this down uh, for about two seconds, it'll disconnect the autopilot. And you'll hear it in your headset, it'll say autopilot disconnect. So be, you'll be able to know, um, you'll be able to hear that happening. Okay, so um, with the autopilot on, um, it's actually very easy for the pilot to override the autopilot. It doesn't take much uh, muscle control to override it. The best way, let's say you, you hit turbulence or you're actually going to come into land to turn that off, the best way to do that is to hit the autopilot disconnect switch. Reason being, let's say you hit some pretty strong turbulence, you don't want to use the autopilot for now. You turn off the autopilot switch here. Now remember we were talking about those gyros and that, that need to initialize in the beginning, they need to stabilize and, and, and find level. If you turn this off and decide, okay, it's, it gets smoother later on, and you want to turn it back on, um, unless it's really smooth air, um, it's not going to quite stabilize the way it's supposed to. So just hit that autopilot disconnect, and um, it'll just turn the autopilot um, off, essentially. You'll still have here in the enunciator um, the off screens, but the, the gyros will, will still be um, initialized and every, stabilized and everything. Okay, so the, the, the Garmin 696 here, it's actually interfaced with the Dynon and with the... Uh, with the, with the Dynon screen and with the autopilot. Um, like I said before, here I have direct to Ramona, and if we click right here, so we're going to change our source here, we're going to change to a GPS source. So remember we got, uh, we got a purple here, a uh, purple line. So here's our, um, pretty much our, our direct to Ramona right here. We have our course, we have our track. Uh, our ground speed would actually, would actually pop up on here too. Our distance to the waypoint would pop up. So these three are all interfaced. Um, you'll get that same information off here, but now you have an HSI which you can navigate off of, which is pretty neat. You could uh, you could actually set up when you set, if you set up a flight plan in here, you say you set up various waypoints. This will automatically switch to the next waypoint, and the autopilot would also navigate to the next waypoint. Let's say you have a turn somewhere in there. Let's say you go Ramona, then direct French Valley. Right over the top of Ramona, your HSI will, will change its course automatically, and your autopilot will turn onto that course. Also, let's say you initiate the autopilot. Um, one thing I like to do. Okay, and another thing with the autopilot, let's say you're going uh, direct to an airport, let's say we hit um, direct to Ramona, um, obviously right now we're, we're not moving so the needle is centered. Um, let, let's say, let's say we, we go direct to Ramona, we, we hit direct to Ramona, but before we initialize the autopilot, let's say we get off course, and so this needle would be deflected. If we navigate off the autopilot, what it's going to do is the autopilot is going to intercept that course, it's going to turn back and get onto that course. So don't be surprised if, if you hit um, direct enter, and you fly around for a little bit and then you initialize the autopilot and it starts an immediate turn um, to that course. It's going to do about a 45 degree intercept back to that course. So what I would recommend doing if you're going to navigate somewhere is you turn the autopilot on and you hit direct enter and just so it goes so you're not doing any crazy turns to intercept it you, you, you're going straight to the to the course. And like I said it's going to do about a 45 degree intercept to get back onto that course. It's most of the information here, um, obviously read the manual to, uh, to read more up about it, but um, that, that's the basic functions of, of the autopilot there and I um, hope you find this helpful.